I want to share with you a guy who's considered the richest man who ever lived. Yes, even to this day, he would be con still considered the richest man who ever lived. Who am I talking about? Well, have you ever heard of the story in the Bible called uh, David and Goliath, right? The big, the big uh, giant against the small shepherd boy and the shepherd boy takes his slingshot and he kills the giant, slays the giant. Well, that guy's name is David. That guy was David. He slayed the giant of the Philistines. He killed uh, Goliath. And anyway, make a long story short, he had a son. And uh, the Lord said, listen, I'm not going to bless you because of your sin with Bathsheba, but I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your son, Solomon. What? Anyway, shortly before David died, he installed his son Solomon to be the king of Israel. It's in 1 Kings in third chapter. And King Solomon's like, okay, now his father passed away. David passed away. Now he's the king of Israel. He's in charge of this kingdom. You are in charge at 12 years old of this, of this nation. Can imagine your feeling. Imagine you putting yourself in that position. Anyway, make a long story short, he's having a conversation with God. God asked him, Solomon, what do you want? Pray for something I'll give to you. By the way, I'm just paraphrasing here. Solomon says, well, geez, I want to make sure I rule right. He says, Lord, give me wisdom and understanding. And God says like, what? Are you kidding me? Yes, wisdom and understanding. He says, dang, Solomon, that's pretty good. He says, not only will I give you wisdom and understanding beyond your belief, especially at the age of 12 years old, but I'm going to give you everything that you didn't pray for. What are you talking about? Countries, land, armies, and in this case, wealth. And it's projected that based on his wealth, how rich really was King Solomon? Well, if you add up all the things that's mentioned about him in the Bible, he'd be considered a 2.2 trillionaire in today's dollars based on his wealth. He, uh, I believe, had a, 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 a tribute fortune every year based on tribute from different countries, $40 billion a year of tribute to Israel. And not only did he gain wisdom and everything that God blessed him with, but the people of Israel was taken through a golden age of wealth, happiness, and prosperity because of the obedience of King Solomon. Now we're looking at King Solomon. He prayed for wisdom and understanding. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you, if you ever thought about becoming financially free, financially independent, if you ever thought about saying, you know what, I'm watching the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel because I want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire. Well, I'm going to point you to a book that I didn't write, but King Solomon wrote. I mean, these things that you read in this, in this book, and I want to point you specifically to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs. It's after Psalms. Everybody reads Psalms because it's the songs that are hymns. But the book right after that is a book called Proverbs, and it's the, I call, I call it the OG memes, the OG one-liners, the OG statements that just punch you upside the head with one sentence based on this wisdom that is uh, documented here in the Bible. And one of the things that King Solomon says is, if you want to get wealthy, you want to have happiness, well, number one, you better operate in diligence. What does that mean? Work with diligence. So let's go over the scripture real quick. In Proverbs 22, verse 29, it says this, do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. Check this out. If you're looking to skill up your game, skill up your game in terms of how you make money, especially in this year of 2020 during the pandemic where everybody's skills are challenged. Can you make money in the recession? Can you make money through the pandemic? Your skills are being challenged right now. And if you're diligent in adapting, adjusting, pivoting, and continue to increase based on your ability to improve and adapt, you are considered diligent. And if you are diligent, you will be serving amongst kings. People will be asking you for your help. And I'm talking about not just the president of the United States, if that's what you think, but in my opinion, there's other kings here in the United States of America, people that run businesses, CEOs, VPs, directors of other companies, people that have transitioned from one business to another, or one career from another. In my opinion, those are kings. You're a king. If you're a king looking for help, you want to seek somebody that is operating with diligence. Those folks, if I'm looking for somebody to help me with my consulting business, I want to make sure that person, that consultant, that person that I'm hiring, I want to make sure that they're diligent in their work. Anybody that works for me, anybody that gets a check for me, I want to make sure that they're operating with diligence. And if so, guess what? They'll be sitting amongst kings. The second thing, if you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, avoid laziness. Proverbs says avoid laziness. So let's define what laziness means. It's four different areas here of definition of laziness. So let's look at Proverbs 21, verse two. All a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. You know, uh, Ray Dalio, who wrote the book Principles, he says, listen, I walk into a room thinking that I'm wrong. 
Because I want to know from the people that have been there, done that, I want people that have thoughts and solutions and ideas and experience. I want to learn from them too as well. He says, I also want to walk into a room thinking that I'm wrong and I prove myself right because he's not walking in there self-centered. Whatever you're doing, I hope that you have a process or demeanor about you according to scripture that says, according to Proverbs, it said, listen, don't be so self-centered. I know that you have a self-interest. I know you have an agenda, but are you there to help others first? Which leads me number two, are you operating with arrogance? Let's talk about what arrogance means here in chapter 26, verse 16. It says, the sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who answer discreetly. So in other words, this guy's arrogance. Like, Dude, I'm working, man. I'm working. I'm working. Dude, I'm working. I'm busting my tail. I'm busting my tail. But other people are like, yo, he thinks he's working. <laughs> he thinks he's actually putting in the effort. Based on his numbers, based on the leader's bulletin, I don't think he's working at all. I mean, did you see his numbers? Did you see his performance? Do you see the amount of uh, revenues brought in based on the effort he's putting in? He thinks he's working, but he's working hard at the wrong things. But they're discreetly saying that about them. But the guy who is arrogant saying, listen, I got this, man. I got this. Hey, that's arrogance kicking in. That's arrogance. And what is arrogance? Arrogance is another embodiment of laziness, which leads us into number three, number four combined together. Ignorance and irresponsibility. You don't want this I and I working against you. Ignorance and responsibility. Let's take a look at this. Proverbs 24, verse 30. The 31, it says, I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of the man who lacks judgment. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. So in other words, somebody had property, somebody had land, somebody had things growing. They didn't take care of it. They acted with ignorance and responsibility. You know, oftentimes, uh, uh, I, I shared a story when I was coming up in business. I said, you know what, man, if I ever have a Mercedes Benz one day, if I ever have a BMW one day, if I ever have a luxury car one day, if I ever have a car one day, I'm going to take care of it, man. I'm going to take care of it. Next thing you know, I owned one. I got one. And the thing was getting dirty all the time. And I told, I told myself, you know, <laughs> I'm saying I'm going to take care of this, but shoot, it's raining all the time. But guess what I told myself? I cannot operate in ignorance and responsibility. I said I was going to do something. I need to make sure I follow through with my word. And so if you are blessed with something, you're blessed with a business, you're blessed with real estate, you're blessed with a family, you're blessed with people that work with you and for you, do not operate with ignorance and responsibility. Otherwise, thorns come in, you're gonna be scratched, you're gonna be in pain, you're gonna be hurt, and you're gonna wonder why things aren't working right. Why? Because it's another embodiment of laziness. I know, it's pretty tough to hear that, but hey, I'm not saying this, this is what scripture is saying from the richest man and the richest king whoever lived. Let's move on to the third one. Counsel. What do you mean counsel? So if I want to grow a business, I want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire. What does counsel mean? Let's look at Proverbs 15 verse 22. It says, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Remember last Sunday I said, I can't be the only person that says I'm doing a good job. Why? Because I cannot see the picture when I'm inside the frame. I need advisors. I need counsel. I need somebody to hold myself accountable to. So therefore, I'm not operating in laziness. So oftentimes you say, I want to do something well. I want to go out and set out in this endeavor and be successful at it. But if you're not seeking counsel, you're not seeking outside help. You're not saying, hey, who can advise me and guide me? Matter of fact, my mentor, Patrick Ben David, he had an advisory board for his company. And he's asked his pastor, Pastor Dudley Rutherford, can you please be on my advisory board, I go to your church, but I need you to counsel me to make sure I operate my business in the best way possible, in the best way possible in terms of the stewardship of the finances I've saved to fund this company and the operation of making sure I'm leading the people that has entrusted me with making a decision to work with me. And he says, no problem. And make a long story short, funny thing is, this same pastor also knew my sister. And when I came to visit my sister, this pastor said, hey, I think you need to meet the Iranian version of you. He says, what? And then he says to Patrick but David, he says, hey, I think you need to meet the Filipino version of you. What? <laughs> and based on his counsel, both Patrick and I, we were introduced together and we hit it off and we're creating something special in the business today. And when we're looking at his YouTube channel, when we're looking at what he's doing, we're looking at the progress of the people that we're coaching, the fact that we've paid in this pandemic year of 2020, the people that were coaching and people that were mentoring, people that were guiding in business, over $9 million in cash flow and commissions and payroll paid out to them. 
that people weren't asking for a stimulus check people weren't asking for a ppp loan people weren't asking for uh, unemployment checks why because people were diligent in their work i'm so proud of these people that we're working with i'm so proud of the people that in embodied and engaged council systems process why because they also sat council they said you know what hey listen my job my career my endeavor is not getting me to where i want to go and i need counsel i need to get truthful with where i am today i need to be honest and truthful with where i am today look at myself in this mirror and if i do not like the reflection that looks at me back i need counsel i need change and that's what these people did and if you want that in your life you got to have people that counsel you and advise you and you got to be able to say hey i may not like what they have to say but they're counseling me and advising me in the direction to help me get to where I want to go. The question for you is not only will you obtain counsel and seek advice, but are you willing to take it? If you seek counsel and you seek advice, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. You're going to see a whole lot further. And that's what advice, good counsel will do for you.